always our dear friend, Ralph Klein. Welcome to another Miracle on the Prairies. <laughs> My friends, this was the very definition of a hard-fought election. We faced the most expensive, fierce, and coordinated opposition in third-party political campaigns in provincial history. Now, many folks uh, wrote us off, even just as recently as last month. But you know what happened? Despite it all, today Albertans chose to move our province forward by re-electing a strong, stable, united, conservative majority government. <laughs> now, this victory would not have been possible without the incredible work of so many. And thank you to our amazing campaign team, to our party and campaign volunteers, and to every single one of you that vote, donated your, your time and your resources to this campaign, you all made the difference. And thank you. Thank you. A special thanks to all of our UCP candidates and their spouses, families, and campaign teams for your tremendous work and sacrifice. Regardless of whether you won or lost individually tonight, you made a difference for Alberta, and we will always be, you will always be part of our UCP team. So thank you. I'd also like to thank the great people of Brooks Medicine Hat once again. Yes. <laughs> You've entrusted me with the responsibility of representing and advocating for your interests, and I am honored and humbled. I'm indebted to you and to all the volunteers, and I will continue fighting for you as your MLA. Thank you, Brooks Medicine Hat. <laughs> and of course, thank you to my dear husband, David. <laughs> Thank you so much, honey, for supporting me, for sacrificing so much of our time together so I can serve our province in this special way. Thank you so much for all that you do. <laughs> well, my friends, the election is now over. It is time to put partisanship, division, and personal and political attacks in the rearview mirror. It's time to move forward together as all Albertans, no matter who we voted for. note, Rachel Notley called me earlier to concede the election with honor and with dignity. We all know about our differences of opinion, but I believe that Rachel Notley is a loyal Albertan who loves this province as much as I or anyone else. Yeah. And she is deserving of respect and kindness and gratitude for the thousands of hours she has sacrificed to serve our democracy, and I hope you'll join me in genuinely thanking her for her public service. And just as I would like to thank the hundreds of thousands of Albertans who voted for the UCP today, I want to speak for a moment to every Albertan who did not. I want you to know that my oath is to serve all Albertans, no matter how you voted. And though I didn't do enough in your judgment, to win your support in this election, I will work every day to listen, to improve, and to demonstrate to you that I can be trusted to improve on the issues that you care so deeply about. Now, I won't be perfect, of course. We all know that. But when I make a mistake, I will listen, correct course, and learn from it so that I can improve and become a better leader. And so I invite all Albertans, regardless of who you supported in this election, to reach out to me with your ideas and your concerns and your questions. That feedback that you give me, positive and negative, helps make our UCP caucus and I to make better decisions. And that is what a healthy democracy is all about. Now, before I go further, I think it's important tonight to recognize the courageous sacrifice and efforts of our firefighters and other first responders who are fighting and winning the battle against forest fires across our province. I'd ask all of us to stand here and applaud our heroes of Alberta. That is what Alberta is all about. We look after each other. We take care of each other. And we must remember that there is much more much more that unites us than divides us. And we will need to be unified in the days and years ahead because there's so much work to do together.
For example, we need to make sure that you and your family keep more of your money for the things that you need, especially during this time of high inflation. We, yeah. We have to make sure that our communities and streets are safe again for our families and our businesses. And we have, have to keep powering and diversifying our amazing economy. And I want to tell every business owner and investor listening tonight, whether doing business inside or outside of Alberta, we are throwing our doors wide open for businesses, large and small. province a uh, home for your business and its employees. Enjoy the benefits of the Alberta tax advantage and bring your jobs and investments here because you are both welcomed and valued. And to demonstrate that, the first bill of our government in the legislative session in the fall will be to guarantee that unless Albertans say otherwise by referendum, the only direction business and personal taxes are headed in this province is down. <laughs> Because we know that when businesses thrive, people thrive. And when we grow our economy, we attract the best and brightest from all over the world, and we want that. We have built the most powerful economy and diverse population in the country on the principles of free enterprise, entrepreneurship, and economic growth. Let's not ever forget that, and let's not ever change that. We also need to ensure that our healthcare and education systems are the best in the world. Not simply adequate, not middle of the pack, the very best in the world. And that means we need to study the best systems and practices around the world and improve upon the strong foundation that we've built here. But it also means empowering our doctors and nurses, teachers and other frontline professionals, along with feedback from patients and parents, to innovate and improve in these areas every single day. So I'm asking healthcare and education professionals tonight. I'm also asking parents and patients to work with me and the UCP caucus to build a healthcare system and an education system that are models for the entire world. I know we can do this together and I am here to listen and to work alongside of you. And finally, my fellow Albertans, we need to come together no matter how we have voted to stand shoulder to shoulder against soon to be announced Ottawa policies that would significantly harm our provincial economy. Now, we have been made aware that in the coming weeks, Justin Trudeau is planning on bringing forward new restrictions on electricity generation from natural gas that will not only massively increase your power bills, but will also endanger the integrity and reliability of our entire power grid, which we rely on during our cold and dark Alberta winters. In addition, the Prime Minister is already ready to introduce a de facto production cap on our oil and gas sector that, if implemented, if implemented will result in tens of thousands of jobs lost, tens of billions in lost investment, damage our province's fiscal position, and bring economic hardship to Albertans. Now, I've made myself clear on this matter to the Prime Minister in person and in public, but I feel we need to do it again. and his caucus are watching tonight. <laughs> but let me be clear, this is not a road we can afford to go down. If he persists, he will be hurting Canadians from coast to coast, and he will strain the patience and goodwill of Albertans in an unprecedented fashion. And as Premier, I cannot, under any circumstances, allow these contemplated federal policies to be inflicted upon Albertans. I simply can't, and I won't. And so I invite the Prime Minister 
Minister to instead halt the introduction of these harmful policies and come to the table in good faith to work collaboratively with Alberta on an energy and emissions strategy that will both grow the Alberta and Canadian economies while using the export of Alberta LNG and emerging technologies to achieve meaningful reductions in emissions. Because when Canadians work together, there is no challenge that we can't overcome. I believe that, but it takes two parties acting in good faith to build that meaningful partnership. Now, Alberta is willing to be that partner, and we need our federal government to show it is willing to partner in good faith as well, and now is the time to do so. We are waiting. So in closing, my friends, tonight is a time for celebration. We celebrate. Yeah. We celebrate the candidates that won their election races and the efforts of those who did not. We celebrate the commitment to democracy of all volunteers and supporters, regardless of party affiliation. And we celebrate those who have sacrificed to secure and protect our right to vote and be a free and prosperous people. And we celebrate this beautiful province and all who live here. This uniquely special place where the best and brightest come from every corner of the world to join us in building one of the greatest places on earth to live and work and raise our families and where the only things that are larger than our mountains is the compassion and irrepressible spirit of our people. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, Alberta, and may our province remain.